Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about enantiomers, diastereomers, and meso compounds. The first thing we're going to be going over is how to identify if two compounds are enantiomers. In short, enantiomers are non-superimposable mere images of one another. Yes, that is confusing, so I'm going to show you how to identify if two compounds are enantiomers. Step one is to identify the stereocenters on both of your compounds, which I went over in my last video. This is where we find a carbon with four different groups. We call that carbon chiral, and we say this chiral carbon could have an R or an S configuration, where R stands for a clockwise rotation, and S is an anti-clockwise rotation of our priority groups around that chiral stereocenter. So, in compound one, is there a stereocenter? We would say, yes, it's right there. Okay, let's figure out if this stereocenter has an R or S configuration. And I'm gonna put the answer in this box right here. So we know every carbon must make four bonds. Here, there is only three bonds drawn in. So we know the fourth must be a hydrogen. Let's draw it on a dash. Here we have the case where priority group number four is in the back, so it's on a dash which is perfect because then we don't need to perform any magic tricks to see if this stereocenter is R or S. We can just label our priority groups one to three and see what type of circle they make. Using the exact same reasoning that I went over in my R versus S configuration video, so please go back and watch it. This would be priority group number one, the group with our OH, and this would be priority group number two, and priority group number three would be the CH3 methyl group. If we connect the numbers one to three what kind of circle do we get one to two two to three three to one clockwise so this would be r so the configuration of compound one and we'll label this the blue stereo center you'll see why in the next question has an r configuration just clean this up a little bit r so now going to compound two identify the same stereo center. So the stereo center with the exact same four groups attached to it, okay? I cannot compare two stereo centers that do not have the exact same groups. So here, look, I found a carbon that also is attached to an ethyl group, a CH3, and an OH group. Perfect. Let's determine if this stereo center has an R or S configuration. And then we can determine if these two compounds are enantiomers or diastereomers. First things first, label our priority groups one to three. Here we can see that our priority group number four, the hydrogen, is actually going to be on a wedge. But that's okay. As we learned in our previous video, all we got to do is pretend as if that group is not there. And then we perform our magic trick at the end. So labeling our priority groups, group number one. Then the ethyl group would be priority group number two. And the methyl priority group number three. If we make a circle, we get a clockwise circle again. But now since our priority group number four is on a wedge, so in our faces, we must flip this from an R and say it is actually S. Remember this magic trick, I went over this in my last video, so please go back and watch it if this is sounding like gibberish to you. So now I would say on compound number two, the blue stereo center right here has an S configuration. So now all you gotta do to determine if these two compounds are enantiomers is see if the configuration flips as you move from compound one to compound two. So here we have an R. As I move from compound one to compound two, I go from R to S. If the configuration changes, they are enantiomers. Enantiomers. Boom. Let's do another example. This time, we have two different stereo centers on each of the compounds. So what we have to do is evaluate the configuration of each of the stereo centers and then compare the appropriate stereo centers to one another and see if the configurations change. So on compound number one, 
I have a stereo center with a bromine group. I'm going to label this the blue stereo center. In compound number two, I need to find this same stereo center, so the stereo center with a bromine group, and also label it blue. On compound number one, I also have a stereo center with a chlorine group. So in compound number two, I must find this exact same stereo center. And what I mean by exact same, I'm just saying the stereo center that has the same groups attached to it. Because what I don't want to do is compare the blue stereo center on compound number one with the green stereo center of compound number two. That is not telling me what I need to know. To determine if these two compounds are enantiomers, I must compare the blue stereo center in compound number one with the blue stereo center in compound number two. And I must compare the green stereo center of compound number one with the green stereo center of compound number two. So in my little table, I will place a blue and a green dot indicating each of the stereo centers. So now I must go and determine if the stereo centers have an R or S configuration. This would be priority group number one, two, and three. If we connect groups one to two, two to three, and three to one, we would get a clockwise circle. So this would have an R configuration. So for compound number one, I would go and say stereo center that is blue has an R configuration. So in compound number two, let's see if the blue stereo center has an R or an S configuration. Labeling the priority groups, we have priority group number one, two, and three. Connecting one to two, two to three, and three back to one, we get an R. Oh, 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 but if we draw in that hydrogen, it's on a wedge. So that means we have to do the magic trick and say, oh, this isn't R. It's the opposite, it's S. So this stereo center would have an S configuration, S. So in our box, corresponding to the blue stereo center, but this time for compound number two, I would say the configuration is S. So now what I gotta do is go and evaluate the configurations of the green stereo centers. I would say priority group one, two, three, one to two to three, this is currently going clockwise, but our hydrogen is on a wedge, which is priority group number four. Therefore, this is not R. We must flip it to S. So this stereo center has an S configuration. So now going to compound number two, let's evaluate the configuration of the green stereo center. Labeling our priority groups one, two, and three. Once again, if you need help with this, please go back to my last video. Going around the ring, what do we get? We get a clockwise R. So filling in our boxes, the green stereo center, a part of compound number one was S, and the green stereo center, a part of compound number two was R. So now what I have to do when there is multiple stereo centers is I have to make sure that all the stereo centers flip from compound number one to compound number two. So going row by row. In row one, we start with R in compound one, and we flip to S, yay! That qualifies for enantiomers. In row number two, starting at compound number one, I have S, and as I go to compound number two, I get R, yay, they flipped. If the configuration flips for both of the stereo centers that correspond to one another, then these two compounds are enantiomers. So these two compounds would be enantiomers. Moving on, let's talk about diastereomers. So now we can ask the question, are the following compounds diastereomers or are they enantiomers? Let's figure it out. What do we got to do? We got to find each of the stereo centers and then determine their configurations. On compound number one and compound number two, there is both two stereo centers. We have a stereo center with a bromine group and we have a stereo center with a chlorine. Place those two dots in our table. Now let's go and evaluate their configurations. Prior to group number one, two, three. What do I get? I get a clockwise, therefore R. So go into my table 
and place R. For the corresponding stereo center on compound number two, I do the same thing. One, two, three. Hmm. One, two, three. Oh, this is also R. Weird. Don't jump to conclusions yet. First, you got to evaluate all of the stereo center's configurations. So, going back to compound number one. With the coring group, we have priority group number one, two, and three. So, one to two to three, back to one. We have an anti-clockwise S circle, but remember, our chlorine is on a dash. That means our hydrogen is going to be on a wedge. So we have to flip from S to R. So R is our real answer. R. On compound number two, we have one, two, three. Connect the numbers, one to two to three. I get S. S. So now evaluating row by row. Let's see what happened to the configurations of the corresponding stereo centers. For stereo center number one, on compound number one, I had an R. And then on compound number two, oh, I also had an R. The configuration did not change. Okay, evaluate the next one. On compound number one, for the blue stereo center, I have an R. And on compound number two, I have an S. Oh, these did change. So in summary, because in row number one, the configuration did not change from compound one to compound two. You have diastereomers because all of the configurations would need to flip for these two structures to be in antimers. Therefore, since the configuration of one of the stereocenters stayed the same and did not flip, these two compounds are diastereomers. All right, guys, the final thing that I'm going to be going over in this video is how to identify a meso compound. So there's two qualifications. The compound must have stereocenters and the compound must have an internal plane of symmetry. So an internal plane of symmetry means that the left hand side reflects the right hand side. The left hand side here is the reflection of the right hand side. And now a way to check is to see if their configurations flip. So configuration of this red stereo center must be the opposite of the blue stereo center. So if I evaluate their configurations, I would get R for the red stereo center, and I would get S for the blue stereo center. So since these two stereo centers have the opposite configuration, Therefore, this is a meso compound. That is it, that is all. Let's do one more example. For example, consider this compound. Can we identify an internal plane of symmetry? Chop, 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 chop. The left-hand side reflects the right-hand side. Let's double check if this is correct. If I've correctly identified an internal plane of symmetry, then the configuration of the blue stereo center will be the opposite of that of the red. So here, if I go and evaluate the R versus S configurations of both, I would get an S configuration for the blue and an R configuration for the red. Therefore, since it flips from S to R, this is indeed an internal plane of symmetry. Therefore, this compound is a meso compound. That is it. That is all. I hope you have a good night. I hope this video was helpful. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and subscribe to my channel. This was a short and sweet little video on identifying enantiomers, diastereomers, and touching on meso compounds because this was a highly requested video. I am going to do a longer video with more of a lecture style on this same topic within the next few weeks. I hope you guys have a great night. Good luck!